Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our examination through the book of Hebrews. Before we get there real quick, let me encourage you within a couple of things. First of all, do share about these times with other folks, okay? Family, friends, enemies, co-workers, whoever it may be. Uh, just show them how to do a podcast. Uh, people are hearing a lot about podcasts, but as in any new technology, they're uncertain as to exactly how this works or how to do it. We were the same way once, remember? And so show them how to do them, walk it through them, and then uh, lead them to this podcast right here. And perhaps it'll be something that'll precipitate discussion and dialogue between y'all. You can talk about things. If you have any questions, feel free to um, shoot them over to me. Uh, you can find different ways to contact me depending upon how you are accessing the podcast. And so the easy thing is to go to my website. It's just dalemore.tv. And uh, on the front page right there, you'll see a place where you can contact me. You'll also see a place on the front page to where uh, you can support the cause if you feel like you're led to, that you can help uh, because these things are not free. They're not free to do, as in all things. And, you know, there's always expenses involved. And so if you feel like you can help with that, that would be greatly appreciated, okay? So we're in Hebrews, uh, the third chapter. And we covered the 12th and the 13th verse yesterday, but I want us to begin there again just to remind us of where we are. And perhaps we'll get done with this chapter today. You know, I'm never quite certain about that. And so here's verse 12. It says this, Take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Now, this is interesting because, he, remember, he's calling them brethren. We keep reiterating that. It's a word of warning. Take care. Take care. It's a word of exhortation. Take care. Take care about what? that there not be an evil, unbelieving heart. See, you can be a brethren. You can be a brethren, but allow evil and unbelief to come into your heart. You don't want to do that, okay? And he says it falls away from the living God. But then verse 13 tells us to do this, but encourage one another day after day as long as it is still called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So he's showing us some things to take care of. Take care that there not be any evil or unbelief coming to your heart. Take care that you not sin, because if you sin, the deceitfulness of sin will cause your heart to be hardened. You see what happens right here. You can be a believer and choose to sin. When you do that, deceit's going to come into your heart. The deceit of sin is going to harden your heart. It's going to bring unbelief and evil into your heart. And he says, don't do that. Otherwise, you will stray. Remember that in the first part of the second chapter, he said, don't be led astray. Here in the third chapter, he says, don't fall away from the living God. Now, verse 14. For we have become partakers of Christ. That's a great declaration. He says, we have become partakers of Christ. And then the next word, if... <laughs> and that word if is always uh, a really, really interesting word here in the English language. Uh, let, me, let me tell you what the Greek says about this. Are you ready for this? If a conditional participle used, but usually like a subjective mood. Well, what in the world does that mean? It means this, that something has occurred. It's conditional in case that if you have believed, and this is who you are, okay, provided that you have done this. It's not necessarily drawing question to it. Quite often it means since you have done this, okay, since you have done it. And you have to look at the context of the whole thing to see what's happening. So look what he's going to say here. Let me finish the verse. It's just a portion of a sentence. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance, assurance firm until the end. This is reiterated throughout the scripture throughout the new covenant throughout the new testament that uh, paul says in another place like this the main way that you know that you're truly saved is that you hold fast to the end okay you hold fast that you believe to the end remember the whole thing with the hebrews jesus is better therefore believe 
And that's what he's saying right here. He said, you need to believe. He said, you will prove that you are partakers. In other words, that you are truly a born-again believer, that you truly have the Father, Son, and the Spirit within you, that you truly have repented and confessed and called upon the name of the Lord, that you truly have been born again if you hold fast the beginning of that assurance firm until the end. That doesn't mean that that is a work of the flesh that keeps us in the faith. Jesus says that point blankly, that he is the one that maintains our salvation. So in the same way that we attain salvation, which is by grace and through him alone, then we maintain salvation by grace and through him alone. Are we to abide in him? Yes. Can I choose not to abide in him? Yes. Can I choose to sin? What we've just been covering right here. And yes. But I'm not required to. I don't have to. It's not by the volition of the flesh and who I am in the way that we were before we were saved. You know, those in the world, they are sinners because this is who they are. But that's not who we are. We have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance from the end. Now, that's not saying <clears throat> that you have to hold it fast to the end and then you get it. No, the ability to hold fast, the ability to rest in him, the ability to do so because of what he is doing in us is evidence that you are truly a partaker of Christ. So let me read this again, verse 14. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. While it is said, today, if your heart hears his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. So he's picking up uh, the same passage that he had quoted earlier in this chapter right here, an Old Testament passage. And he's talking about how the children of Israel had provoked him. And he's going to give more insight into that right now. So let me go ahead and read these four verses and it'll finish this chapter. Verse 16. For who provoked him when they heard? Indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned whose body fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So that's up through verse 18. There's one more verse. So he's asking, how many rhetorical questions here? One, two, three, four, uh, five. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's five questions he's asking. And the idea is, okay, who was it that the Lord was hacked off with? Well, it was their forefathers, their forefathers, because they did not enter into his rest. Well, how do they not enter his rest? He wanted to take them into the promised land, but they would not enter the promised land because of fear, because they saw the giants in the land. Then he just describes it what it is. He said they were disobedient. The Lord would have given it to them, but they did not believe. As a matter of fact, the spies that came back testified of it. They said, I mean, the ones that didn't want to go, those 10, they said, oh, yeah, it's exactly what God said. It is the land flowing with milk and honey. It's everything, but we can't take it. There's giants in the land. The people are huge. They're too numerous. There's no way we can do it. And the people believed the lie of the committee report. They were disobedient. They did not enter into the rest. And the Lord was angry with them 40 years. Now the last verse, verse 19. So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. So what's the point? He's driving home to that group of believers that received this letter and to us that we can refuse to believe, that we can have unbelief, and because of that, not enter into the rest of the Lord. I dare say that most people who profess to be believers and most people who truly are believers, who truly are partakers of Christ, are yet to have entered into the rest that the Lord has for them. We'll talk more about that later. Again, I'm Dale, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.